What we'll talk about in this video is the effect of a price change on the quantity or the optimal quantity of a good that the consumer should consume. And this can be broken down into the total effect, the total effect, the income effect, and the substitution effect. And we will first talk about the total effect. The total effect is basically the total effect or the gross effect of a price change on the optimal quantity that the consumer should consume. So if we have, for example, an indifference map, uh, X sub 1 here on the uh, horizontal axis and X sub 2 on the vertical axis, and we have this utility level, that's not a nice line, Th we have this utility level U0 and a budget line right here. And the point of tangency of the utility curve and the, or the utility level and the um, budget line is right here. So the consumer would consume an optimal quantity of x uh, of good one, which is x sub one star. Now, what would happen when there is a price increase in good one, but everything else remains constant? So, if the same budget, the same budget is allotted by the consumer to buy both goods one and two, then the maximum quantity that the consumer can buy of good one would decrease since the price of good one increases. So what this means is that from this intercept here, this uh, the quantity of good one would now decrease and so there will be a new intercept to the left of the old intercept. So let's say that after the price increase, the consumer can only consume this much of good one at a maximum. And when we look at good two, or the quantities of good two, we can see that actually when the good price of good one increases, the maximum quantity that the consumer can buy of good two does not actually change. So this point right here, the intercept of the uh, vertical axes does not change. And so what happens is our budget line actually pivots from here to here. It simply pivots. So the maximum quantity of good two that the consumer can buy does not change, but the maximum quantity of good one that the consumer can buy decreases. And so now what we can actually see is that the consumer can no longer maintain or uh, afford his old utility level. And he is actually forced to decrease his utility because now his income or his purchasing power decreases. So now after trying to maximize his utility given his new budget line, he, he will now have a utility level, a utility level of U1. And the optimal quantity, it's where the budget line and this utility curve are tangent. The new optimal quantity is here. And this will be labeled as also X1 star but since it's the new one, uh, I'd prefer to label it as X1 star prime. And so now this difference here, this decrease in X sub 1 or the, quant the decrease in the optimal quantity of X, uh, good 1 is what we call the total effect. This is what we call the total effect. And the total effect basically tells us that when price changes, this is the effect it has or the gross effect it has on the quantity of that good. And so the total effect can actually be broken down into two parts, which are the income effect, the income effect, and the substitution effect. And to show what the substitution effect and the income effect are, it's easier to do this graphically. So we have to first, again, draw another, draw draw another indifference map indifference map so again this is x sub 2 and again this is x sub 1 and so we have this same utility level which is u naught and so again the same budget line let me just extend this part here just so our budget line could fit and so at this point at the old or original prices this is the optimal point of consumption or optimal bundle where the consumer would consume x1 star 
And so now again, what happens is uh, the price of good one increases. So the price of good one increases. So again, this budget line pivots pivots let's say it pivots until here because of the price change so the consumer can only consume half of his original quantity and so what happens is actually the real income or the real purchasing power of the consumer decreases but what if this time we say that the consumer can actually allot more money more money or a larger budget to stay on the same utility level which is what the substitution effect does. What the substitution effect does is assume that the consumer actually stays on the same utility level and see how much of a decrease or how much of a change in the quantity of good one or the, uh, the good we're trying to look for um, changes. So here, our budget line actually pivots and we see very, um, very evidently that the slope of our budget line actually changes. So the slope of our budget line changes and the real purchasing power also changes. But what if our real purchasing power actually stays the same? So what happens is um, if the real purchasing power stays the same, that means that the consumer can actually still uh, afford to stay on this same utility level. And so what we do given the new price ratio is draw another line. Let's make this a teal line. We'll draw another line here, which is, uh, which is parallel to our new budget line. And what this does, what this does is actually show the uh, new price ratio and how, where it would be tangent to our old indifference curve. And so, what this gives us is a new optimal quantity without the real uh, real purchasing power of the consumer changing. So what we see here is that if the consumer was had the capability to stay on the same indifference curve, if the consumer had the same uh, indifference curve, he would not consume X1 star, but he would consume X1 a new, and, and he would consume a new quantity of good one, which we will label X1 prime. And so this part here, when the consumer actually is able to stay on the same utility level after a price change, this is what we call the substitution effect. And now um, the income effect, however, is uh, the total effect. It's the total effect minus the substitution effect. That is the income effect. And what we know about the income effect is that uh, when we look at the actual total effect, which means that the consumer changes his utility level because he is forced to go down. So he is forced to consume at this point here, which we will label as x double prime, x1 double prime x1 double prime. So what happens is um, if the consumer does not get the compensation he needs to stay on the same utility level, then he would now get the uh, consequence of the income effect because he does not have the income or the compensation he needs to stay on the same indifference curve. So um, the difference or the gap between x1 star and x1 prime, this is the substitution effect. And the gap between uh, x prime, x1 prime, and x1 double prime, this part here, is actually what we call the income effect. And if we take the total of this, the total of this, this would be what we call our total effect. And so the same thing applies in our first graph. Given the total effect here, we can actually uh, break this down into the income effect and the substitution effect. And the way to do this, uh, our price increased, so X1 star actually decreased, right? So the way to do this is actually just to draw a parallel line to the new budget, uh, uh, new uh, price ratio. So 
following the new price ratio, this is a parallel line. Let me use teal again just for consistency. So we have a new parallel line to the new price ratio. And so what we see is the consumer would consume still less than the original quantity of good one right here. X1, let's say double prime. And so again, this part here is our substitution effect because the consumer stays at the same utility level. And this part here is what we call our income effect because the consumer now does not get the uh, compensation he needs to stay on the same utility level. And actually, mathematically, um, the substitution effect, I mean the total effect, the total effect, the total effect is just equal to the partial derivative of our Marshallian demand with respect to price. Because here in our Marshallian demand, what we're trying to do is actually to maximize our utility given a budget constraint. And since our budget constraint actually changes due to the price change, then what we find is the change in our optimal quantity consumed given that price change. And that is just our change or change in our Marshallian demand with respect to price. And so now we see that from x1 star here, from x1 star here until x1 pr double prime here, that is what we call the change in our Marshallian demand given the price change. On the other hand, we also have the substitution effect. And what we see on substitution effect is that the consumer stays on the same utility level. And it sounds familiar because we've already actually tackled this. It's the Hickson demand. The Hickson demand tells us that we have this um, target utility level that the consumer wants to stay on. And we're trying to find, in our Hickson demand, we're trying to find the minimum expenditure that the consumer needs to get on that utility level. And so our substitution effect, our substitution effect is actually just equal to our partial derivative of our X1C or our Hickson demand for good one with respect to the price of good one. Using this logic alone, however, doesn't really get us anywhere. To more formally introduce how this total effect, substitution effect, and income effect are broken down in math, we have to first set another graph again. So if I were to draw another indifference map here, so this is x1 and this is x2, and again we have this utility curve here, and this will be labeled as u0, and again a budget line here, or a budget constraint. So this point here, the optimal quantity of good one, and let us say that the consumer has enough of his budget to maximize his utility such that the maximum utility level is equal to the objective utility level of the expenditure minimization, basically the duality again. So if, if this were um, subject or following the duality of the expenditure minimization and utility maximization, then, then it follows that x1c, x1c is actually equal to x1 star. And we know that x1 star is actually equal to x1, which is a function of p1, p2, and e, which is a function of p1, p2, p, p2, let me fix that, p2, p2, and u. So what we'll get is actually x1c is equal to this expression right here. And if we take the partial derivative, partial derivative of x1c with respect to p1, this would now be equal to, to the partial derivative of x1 star with respect to p1 plus, plus, plus the partial derivative of x1 star with respect to e multiplied by the partial derivative of e with respect to p1. And so here we see that 
the change in Hicksian demand with respect to the price change is equal to the partial derivative or the change in our Marshallian demand with respect to the price change plus the partial derivative of x sub 1 star with respect to E times the partial derivative of E with respect to P1. So again, the change in our this term here, the change in our Hicksian demand with respect to price the, with respect to the change in price of good 1 is actually our substitution effect. We've discussed this a while ago and we've also shown this graphically. Um, the second term right here, the second term here, is the change in our Marshallian with respect to the change in the price. And this is what we call our total effect. So now we see that this thing here, this term here, is actually our income effect. The, our income effect. So if we were to rewrite this in terms of total effect, so we will um, simply place this here and this one here. So this would now be equal to the partial derivative of x1 star with respect to p1 would be equal to the partial derivative of x1c with respect to p1 um, minus minus the partial derivative of x1 star with respect to e times the partial derivative of e with respect to p1. If we were to write this in terms of uh, the substitution effect, the total effect and income effect, well, this would be, then this would be the total effect would be equal to would be equal to I'm just trying to make sure I don't get the um, signs wrong would be equal to the substitution effect plus the income effect and do note that the signs here and here are different simply because here we have a positive sign whereas uh, it it's actually total effect minus the income effect. So uh, just make sure that you don't get confused with the signs here. When it's written as these letters, when it's written as these letters here, it's always TE or total effect is equal to the sum of the substitution effect and the income effect. However, when we write it mathematically, it's minus because math. <laughs>